There is a flood coming, a wave. We're told in Revelation 12 verse 2, Therefore rejoice, O heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea. For the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. The devil knows and he understands that his time is short. His days are numbered, and so he is coming with anger. He's coming for the believers, trying to get them to backslide. He's coming for those who are on fire for God, and he's trying to get them to a state of being lukewarm. He's coming for the family and for the home, also that he can steal, kill, and destroy. But the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him, meaning that should the devil try to flood your life, then in Jesus' name, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Whatever the flood may be, God will raise a standard against him. You have the Deliverer in Jesus. You are on higher ground when you stay in the presence of the Lord. You have a defense in Jesus, an impenetrable fortress, and no flood from the devil can harm you. At some point in life, most people will hear the term, the good old days. And in most instances, it's a reference to a time period that people remember fondly. Our grandparents always believed that the days they grew up and lived in were far better than this present day. Likewise, our parents talk about how things were when they were coming up and how they were different and better than the things that exist today. Matthew 24 verse 37 to 38 reads, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. The days of Noah, from generation to generation, would you say that society as a whole has been improving morally and spiritually since the days of Noah? Or would you say that society has been declining morally since the time of Noah? During the days of Noah, the Bible says in Genesis 6 verse 5, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. How does this generation compare? If sin was prevalent in those days, what should we make of this present day? If the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the days of Noah, then what does he think of today? We've had a boom in technology, the kind of technology that makes it easier to sin in many different ways. We've had society glamorize sin through celebrities and entertainment. So if the days of Noah were bad, what about today? Could this current generation be the most wicked known to man, at least since the flood? Jesus did not refer to the days of the past, the days of Noah, as the good old days, but instead, he referred to them as a time that we could look at as a means to understanding his second coming. For Christians, this might inspire us to want to ask the question, exactly how bad was the generation that existed in the final days before the flood? In speaking of his own return, Jesus said in Matthew 24 verse 3 to 39, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus desired to let his followers know that if we could discern and understand the times leading up to the flood, then perhaps we could discern and understand the season in which he, Jesus, would return. It's all about having the awareness to know that when these things start happening when people become comfortable and start pushing God out of their lives, when sin and wickedness are the norm, when you start to feel the birth pains then you know. You know that the return of Christ is near. So what was it like during the days of Noah? What was it like before the destruction of mankind? The book of Genesis tells us that the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. The Bible also teaches that all mankind was corrupt and that the earth was a wretched place. Genesis 6 verse 11 to 12 says, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. So the earth was filled with violence. All flesh had corrupted their way. Compare those descriptions against the world today. However, in and amongst all that was going on, Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Noah was described as perfect and just in his generation. He was described as a man who walked with God, and because of this, he was saved. In this day and age, ask yourself, as a man or woman of God, 
Am I a Noah in this sin-filled world? Am I walking with Jesus? Am I practicing righteousness? Or am I to be found sitting and dining at the same table as those who willingly sin against God? Though God's intent was to destroy the evil that controlled the hearts and minds of His creation, He did not intend to annihilate His greatest creation as a whole, which is why He saved Noah. God's heart has always been to reconcile sinners back to a state of righteousness. He wants us to spend all of eternity with Him, but all too often, we're not paying attention to His Word, which tells us how to live and what to watch out for in times like these. Sure enough, if you take a look at this world through the lens of the Bible, you will notice a trend. What the Word of God stands for, the world is against. What Jesus Christ stands for and represents, the world is against. Those who have been blinded by Satan live under a delusion. They won't see that the love of money drives so many ungodly things. Instead, they will focus on the notion that everyone needs money, everyone needs to make a living, of course. And the Bible never says money is evil. It says the love of money is evil. And when you love money so much that you're willing to do things that are unethical and immoral, then money has become an idol. When you're willing to steal or to overlook the detrimental effect you have on others, also that you can make money, then it has become an idol to you. When you love money so much that you're willing to stand in front of a camera and not only commit sexual sin but lead others to commit sexual sin, then money has become an idol. Take a look at what the Amplified Version says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4. But even if our gospel is, in some sense, hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only to those who are perishing. Among them, the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelieving to prevent them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. The devil wants you as far away from Jesus Christ as possible. He wants you to be blind to the truth, even if it is right in front of you. The devil wants you to take God casually, not seriously, meaning you use God like a convenience store. You go to him when you need something, and if you don't need anything, then you put him away. That's blindness. Now, with this all being said, I want to be very clear about this next point. While the devil is described as the god of this world, he is limited. He is not all-powerful. The devil rules the earth in a limited capacity, but he does not have ownership of the earth, nor is he all-knowing, omnipresent, and omniscient. He is not. The devil has boundaries because God is still sovereign and holds the final say. Revelation 12 verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea. For the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. The devil's time on this earth is short, and what I want you to understand is that Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. When you look to Jesus, there is no devil or demon that can blind you. When you look to Jesus, there can be no love for money in your heart because your love for Christ is greater. When you look to Jesus, you cannot be blinded, distracted, or whisked away by immorality, sin, greed, or pleasure. I encourage you to really focus and be fixated on the Lord. This way, you can't go wrong. There are a lot of things happening in this world. There is a lot of evil. The Bible in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 says, In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Think about that for a moment. The God of this age, the God of this world, Satan has prevented unbelievers from seeing the light of the gospel. Now, in case you didn't know, the devil is very influential on this earth. Whether you see it or not, whether you believe it or not, the devil can and has influence on the ideals, opinions, and standards in this world. That's why the Bible says, the God of this world, the devil, has his tentacles in the world's philosophies. They are in so many institutions. And you may think, well, how exactly does he do this? Well, look at the driving force of many, many major companies. It's money. Money has become a god, an idol to many people, including the bosses of many major corporations. They will track your movements, watch what you're watching, 
analyze what you click on, some even take your personal information and sell it. With the objective of what? Money. Money is the number one objective. Money is the only objective for so many institutions in this world. Yet the Word of God says, the love of money is the root of all evil. But you see, the God of this world, the devil, blinds unbelievers, and they don't see this. They don't see how money has become an idol to them. Another example to illustrate just how the God of this world, the devil, has blinded the minds of unbelievers is this. The Bible tells us to flee sexual immorality. The Bible tells us that fornicators and adulterers and the sexually impure will not inherit the kingdom of God. However, in this world, what type of content is searched for the most on the internet? It's all sexually explicit content that is related to opposing the Word of God. One site by the name of Covenant Eyes reported that 30% of internet content is pornography. 30% of content online is geared to promoting sexual impurity, and the sad thing is the number of visitors to these sites is in the billions. This is the work of the God of this world, and the truth is, this world needs believers who are full of Christ. It needs spirit-filled believers who can be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Be so filled with the word that the light of Jesus Christ will shine through you into this world. We are not commanded to hate anyone in this world. We are commanded to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. This love that the Bible speaks of is one that can only be shown to others when you yourself have received Jesus Christ. Unbelievers may be blinded by the God of this world, but as Christians, we need to ensure that we are overflowing with the love of Jesus Christ so much so that they will have to see the truth. They will have to see the way to eternal life. Now, the most important thing is that we should be spending our time and energy chasing after the Lord because the more we know Him, the more we know truth. And the more we know truth, the more easily we can identify deception.